the whole of my luck. All of my luck. The whole of my luck. Yeah, that is. The whole of the dog. My carry and tears. The whole of Adonai. The whole of Elohim. Curios tears by the creator. Curios tears, Christos. Elda at Ehova. Yel Emuna Ehova. Ibas Leon Curios. Otios. O Panta Creta. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Curios. Curion. Ehova da Bar Halal. Elohim da Bar Halal. Ehova Elohim. Gadol Gadol Geburra. El Elohim Israel. Jesus Christos. Ton Christon is in Ton Curion. Kurion ni mahagion panta greater, gadol gadol, geburra. Ehova ishmal kam, Ehova shamma, el nakum yehova, el nakum yapa. Natsak Israel la sheker, gava gava. Triambas yehova, Isus Christos, panta greater, gadol gadol, geburra. Mora rosh nasa, Elohim, Elohim, Ilay la eshalut, Yehovah Malak, Yehovah Malak, Olam, Olam at, Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Zoan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmias, Despotes, Dikaesune, and Jesus Christos, Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Meshvat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, to realize what is the state of man before God, whom he created in his own image, Demut, but afterwards Adam through sin nature progenated, called as Salem. So once again from the status of Salem, ordinary status of Adama, every believer have to wake up to become Gabor man in Christ. So for that cause we have been kept alive one more day on the face of the earth, not for the standards of realizing the lustful patterns of the old sin nature, where every day man has been far away from God in such a sense that day by day he has been walking contrary to the will of the Lord. Though God the Father said in Leviticus chapter 26, If you walk contrary to me, I will walk contrary unto you seven times. Yet these people, they are not able to realize, nor wake up, nor understand what is that they are walking contrary to the will of the Lord. So one more day being granted in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. The two days we couldn't have the things pertaining to the glory of God. Yet he will use the privacy of the priesthood to confess our sins through rebound. 
and let's continue after this prayer what God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in a great past to the praise of his glory in his matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of his word infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the grace of lord to learn the truth though we don't deserve anything on this earth oh father you have had given us one more chance to learn the word so that lord we could correct our lives we could fear you we could serve you we could cling unto you and we could swear by your name on this earth as you have said by swearing upon yourself the earth shall be filled with the glory of the lord so father being thankful for this privilege to renew your word once again in our lives to strengthen us and to get ourselves to be boosted up we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten to challenge and to bless us by this message which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in the twenty past to the praise of your glory in a matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace in christ name we ask sovereign lord amen so dear brethren what is man on the face of the earth many people trying to explain man in the terms what they can easily understand according to their experiences according to the standards of their renewed knowledge but man is been made in the image of god as we call in genesis chapter 5 demot and the word demot over here it meant to say lord god intended man to get every thought into captivity for christ the process of your blood which is pumping in your body demands to get every thought into the captivity for christ the theological word definition of the word demot people may try to explain in those terms which has been feasible to the best but here we love to explain in the standards what we can call pictographical representations of the word here when we find the word in his likeness the strong code number 1823 and the meaning of the word likeness over here is nothing but to get every thought into captivity for Christ as long as he has blood in his body and man dieth if he doesn't have the blood so the pilgrimage trip from the day he has been taken before the foundation of the world of Ephesians 1 4 through 6 as such even we look Galatians chapter 1 and Jeremiah chapter 1 emphasizing though you are in the mother's womb i have separated you from my work so you can look upon in simple terms that the day when you have been conceived right from day till the day you die on this earth blood which has been formed as he claims many questions to job and he claims and he asks him do you know how the bones can grow up in the body so the blood what has been given for man from the time of his birth till the time of his death the blood which circulates that meant to say what if you don't have blood you're going to die that's the very simple example what we can learn from the animal which has been given sacrifice to the lord the sacrifice which has been given the way how shedding of the blood he did not go to take up with adam or eve but rather in return he comes to take up with the process of the word by given the goat or the sheep in the replacement of that so he said to them not to eat the blood because the blood contains the life so we know all these things so here blood is the principal work what mankind can know to be the life if anything of a cancer that could happen people could realize if it is a blood cancer the way how the cells will be eaten up if there is no blood they need to go back for the standards of replacing the blood like leukemia disease what the man is able to advance in his science but in all the ways in all the terms if you could look it is what christ our lord our god blood sanctifies us redeems us and has he said in the great in the great gospel of john chapter 6 my blood and my flesh if you don't eat you will not have life so here on this earth to survive we need the blood but when we go back in the resurrection body we don't need the blood so as long as we have blood in this flesh the first priority for us is to make sure to get every thought into captivity for christ by that we meant to say what 
be available to understand your way of life or the standards of your life in the viewpoint of getting every thought into captivity for Christ and by that we meant to say what take up your standards of reading bible doctrine ana ginisco the greek word for reading where the pastor teacher can come and explain to you word by word line by line precept upon precept iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier if you don't find such pastors pray to lord god the father as he said in jeremiah 3:15 to send shepherds after his own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding as malachi 2:7 also emphasizes again the point the lips of the priest should possess knowledge and the people shall go there to learn the wisdom to learn that knowledge so here dear brethren we have great many things to learn as the word of lord god emphasizes again and again for us to know that you as long on this earth you can survive nothing but the word of god if you don't know the word of god as christ our lord of god said in matthew 4:4 or john chapter 8 verses 2 through 4 he emphasizes man does not live by bread alone but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of his word so dear brethren we need to look upon the blood what we are containing in us demands the word of god that's the real principle if your blood doesn't demand the word of god it is no way of a chance to survive on this earth you may be thinking you can survive by formulating the oxygen from the plant and you can make to give out your carbon dioxide and they can be the photosynthesis process getting your oxygen you can breathe in your nostrils and breathing in your nostrils the blood can pump because all the organs in the body can work out so what is the work of the heart to pump the blood what is the organs for your desires on this earth to be fulfilled flow of the blood if there is no flow of the blood you cannot enjoy anything that meant to say what without blood there is no life and the blood demands the word of god the pure the blood the great the word of god and that's what our blood ought to be to christ that's the word demut lord god made man in his likeness the strong code number 1823 and that what we find the mouth and the word the mouth meant to say what your blood demands day by day to gather in the word of lord god no matter what getting every thought into captivity for christ that's what you have been called in christ get every thought every thought literally every thought into captivity for christ if you're not able to get every thought into captivity for christ your blood cannot really enjoy the true purpose of life on this earth and you have any sickness on this earth the doctor would call you for blood report you want to check out what is happening to the blood and every time you have sickness now just think your blood report with the word of god your blood doesn't contain in it the word of god many people have become so much in the sense to say lunatic as christ our lord of god healed even the people of lunatic who came to his sense the people who have become mad the people in the sense who have been driven crazy for this life on this earth such lunatics are more to the core in our pulpits in matthew chapter 4 in verse number 24 we look emphasizing His fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all the sick people. The word sick is called in the Greek kakos. The word translated over here kakos. And here if you could look upon the word kakos is nothing but your brethren distorted thinking in their head. You know that's very very simple. the sick people are the direct result of having their thinking distorted from the word of the lord so what happens to them it becomes like a curse because no matter how much of time they have been given on this life they will never renovate the standards of the thinking the romans 12 1 2 3 emphasizes in emphasis of ephesians chapter 4 that we need to conform to the image of Christ we need to grow up to the full measure stature of the thinking of the lord of a god we are still sick because you have to be 
renovated first from the world and then you have to renovate yourself into the spiritual world renovating into the world people will call lightened mind or enlightened mind and renovated into the spiritual world you have been called to be spiritual mind but here people are neither enlightened mind or spiritual mind because they have been still slumbering like an unbeliever what to eat what to drink what to wear thinking as if they can live on this earth if ever they would love to live on this earth like methuselah 969 years who is the great one outlived till then they will be just like a museum piece they cannot understand they cannot realize to live a great life than 120 years where god the father cuts off the lifespan of every man and people are thinking they can live people are thinking they can grow up people are thinking they can research but the bible is very very clear in that if you find sinners by the age of 70 or 80 you will be ending up with all mannerism of sicknesses in you the bible is so clear to understand and to teach that you people are not able to realize if the bible says 120 years there ends the matter then in the span of this 120 years what is your life what is the purpose of your life your sick in mind that's what you're thinking your sick in mind the word kakos what we find arar when to say what like a curse if you're a curse you know what it is your mind not being renovated in the word of lord god is a curse you may be thinking lord we can get out of this cursing as in daniel chapter 4 this man uh, nebuchadnezzar was been informed however if we could do some good works and show some pity we can be prolonging the days of your life and then one fine day when he comes out in verse 27 and 28 and he says lord isn't i who did all these things suddenly the curse from the lord god struck him out that meant to say what he was not renovated to understand the principle what daniel intended him to do that is it is lord god the father who obey, who directs in his sovereignty all the things on this earth he couldn't understand that simple principle and then he was been sent like a beast growing up his nails and hairs till he could finish off the term of his curse when he get back to his senses he says it is not a lord it is what you are going to control all these things in this life till that time he is been taken in the standards to make them to realize that it is god who controls so what is your curse the curse is you have failed to renovate your thinking such men came to my christ kakos your thinking should be far away above than the thinking of these unbelievers therefore he says in ephesians 4 these are alienated from the life of god from the plan of god how do they renovate they renovate the standards of the thinking by the word of god but they have been darkened but you haven't been so why you have been given the life of having the fellowship in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit to such an extent that being breath by breath in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit it would simply call you to learn the word of god that's not been done today they're not able to realize the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit is to make them to be in the learning of the word of god acquiring of the word of god knowing the word of god and they don't have any other thing why the holy spirit of god has been given the temporary spiritual gifts before the completion of canon of scripture miracles healings tongues afterwards in ad 70 itself the tongues have been ceased in ad 0070 the first century itself because it was a gift given to them by the prophecies of isaiah in chapter 28 and 29 he shall speak to you with your own tongues because that time also the prophets failed to do the work of the lord god they were drunkards vomiting on their own tables and they couldn't go to do the missionary work and therefore isaiah comes in because warn to them they drink they think drink upon drink early in the morning itself and the vomiting upon their own tables he comes to tell them what you're doing is wrong the time will come when to whom you have to go and tell about this great gospel great great truth you have failed 
now they will only come and tell to you in your own languages in your own terms that's what he said and when they when he's telling that this he uses the word glossolalia and that's how we learn the point glossolalia saying to them in the words they are going to speak in your own language and that's what we look the grip of evangelism from AD 30 to AD 70 40 years of evangelism and afterwards they have been stopped because the temple was been completely destroyed and that they thought they could survive now he gave them the chance but today people who are talking in tongues it is not tongues they don't have an interpreter they're not able to realize what they're talking they think they're talking but it is not at all it is an angastromuthas demon controlling their vocal cords and leading them to such sin and they're not glorifying lord god they're blaspheming in return so this temporal spiritual gifts are for the completion of the canon of scripture the miracles the healings the tongues in fact indeed the apostles and the prophets they are also been seized because they have done their work in the completed canon of scripture we have now the permanence of the spiritual gifts the pastor teachers and evangelism the gift of helps the gift of hospitality and we have something more to learn the bona fide work of the pastor teacher because it is a day by day process of inculcating that's what he writes in the mystery epistles of colossians chapter 1 verses 24 to 29 he said teaching them admonishing them exhorting them so that we can present them in the presence of lord god the father perfect and complete and the reason why he says that is very very simple because the vicarious suffering of christ which they couldn't pay now through the church which we the apostles are the one pertaining to be the teacher or the one who pertaining to be the word of god they could come back and teach so he said we have this mental agony of christ to be fulfilled the great will of christ to be fulfilled such a great mental agony which god the father has on behalf of the church to fulfill first timothy 2:4 number 1 none to be perished and number 2 everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory none to be perished he gave salvation his son but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory and people are not able to renovate their thinking because they haven't been in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit if they have been in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit the first thing what they would do they would guide you into all the truth nothing but the truth and that's very very simple we have been kept away alive nothing but the truth to be taught and that's the right ministry of lord god the holy spirit because you may not find past as though he said in first john chapter 2 verse 20 and 27 you will get the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit the unction what you have received from the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit hold by it learn by it know the truth in it that's what we have been called unction of lord god the holy spirit and what does he do in that unction he teaches to you the word of god but today they have changed that therefore cacos kind of people are much they forgot the real purpose of the mouth why god created man your blood demands the word of god people may disturb, people may go on to have discrimination in the blood groups because of the reaction what it go to happen some will say o positive or b positive or a positive no matter whatever all the positives or negatives in the blood groups you just look it is the color the same called to be the red in simple words it is the blood which has been demanding the word of god and that blood demands all the time to get out of your cacos or your evil standards of thinking those evil standards which are highest to the cause you just look what an extent you are living evil standards to the cause therefore here you find the word arar and what is the meaning of the word arar kakos being taken in the greek the strong code number 779 it is a curse arar meant to say curse 
And what is that curse, dear brethren? The curse is the way how you will be vomited out, spitted out, as I said, that you are neither hot nor cold. So what does he do? He goes to spit you out. That's the word, curse by spitting. That is looking upon your renovation of your thinking. Looking upon the thinking that's going on right now. You know, you have three stages. First, the base level of stage like the world, common to the world, cosmos thinking. And then the second stage should be the enlightened thinking where you have overcome the cosmic way. And the people of the religion minded, they're able to come to say the best what we can do is be peace and try to live your own way of life in the standards of not hurting others. That's what they call, that's an enlightened way of life. And many people are trying to live such enlightened way of life to say morally good or this or that. And in all those things, what they're trying to say and they're trying to make it up, enlightened way of life. And then third one, what we can look, it is called what the Bible from the enlightened as the unbelievers are also able to have such sort of a life. Now he's going to talk about the life, what he can say, spiritual way of life. This is the third one. And then we can say, the first one, the normal way of life or the base ground called to be like the unbelievers and believers walking in the vanity of their mind. The second life is what they think they have achieved some sort of sense in their life. Because the word arar has a double head. The first head is the enlightened world. The second head is the spiritual world. Having enlightened world, you can find many foolish virgins these are. And these foolish virgins, what you can find in the enlightened world, they just think life is in such and such terms. The terms of being good to each other, the terms of expressing peace with each other, the terms of making to live a life in each other's sense. They're simply able to think that will be the way of life. No, dear brother, not at all. That is a sense of life for the thing. These are called to be like foolish virgins who maintain the chastity, who maintain the fear for the sense of appearing before God, for the protection, not for the sense of fearing God to do His will. You know, a symbol of prayer, as many people know, they get the two hands together and they bind it up, as we can call in India, Namaste, if you can look upon that symbol. They just put both hands together and they just bow down saying sense that we are praying to God. They don't come in the sense of praying to God, but rather if you could look upon one of the famous company insurance in India called to be LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India. LIC of India, if you could look, it's a very big one. They just look into the symbol of that. You will see not just both palms being put together, but both palms being spread together to say that we will protect you. The symbol recognizes that they are going to protect it is not just to bow down before the Lord God in prayer, in humility, and say that, Lord, we are praying for you for our protection. But rather, in return, they look upon the standards of insurance to say and to cover, saying that it is going to protect them. So we are going to protect them. Today, what is man depending upon is insurance rather than his assurance in Christ. Man is simply able to look upon his insurance to be protecting him. A flight insurance, train insurance, building insurance, health insurance. Everything is been worried about such insurance, but is not able to worry upon the standards of assurance in Christ. That's very simple, dear brother. He's not able to have that great life in the Lord. Because he's just like a foolish virgin. The virgin who haven't realized the sense of getting acquired in Christ his life. They were also virgins, virgins in the sense being pure, having their respective guards and their terms and conditions so that they're saying, Lord, you take care of us. You take care of us these things. We will just pay your nominal tithes, nominal collections. But God is not happy with such people because in Matthew chapter 7 he said, those who call Lord, Lord, they will not enter into my kingdom. 
But they that have done the will of Lord God the Father, they will enter. The same thing over here, calling Lord God, Lord, Lord is not an issue. But doing the will of Lord God the Father, entering to perform the marvelous glory of Lord God the Father is what your life is all about. And what is it we're going to call to become the will of Lord God the Father? None to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of His glory. That's what the will of Lord God the Father is all about. So the second stage of your arar is what your enlightened mind, and people think reaching enlightened mind is a great achievement. Reaching enlightened way of life is a great requirement for man, and they think they've really achieved the bliss of happiness, no dear brethren. That is where you are coming to the point to say, we shall not cheat others. We shall not be having to deceive others or respecting the rights of other men. And that doesn't mean you have been spiritually enlightened. The word spiritual enlightenment requires that you carry your cross and make up your thinking to be renovated as per the standards of Bible doctrine. So the first head, foolish virgins, the second head, wise virgins. They know now, the blood demands the word of God. They know now, the thinking is not to be corrupted by the world, but they have to renovate the thinking by the word of God. They know now only one thing, the purpose of man kept on this earth is to resolve this angelic conflict, to glorify the name of the Lord God, the Father, to the highest. They know now. Therefore, God the Father in Matthew chapter 4, when he emphasizes, he looks upon such people who are cacos, who are evil. And then, furthermore, dear brother, and here if you could look, the people evil are the ones who haven't heard about from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, any way of discipleship program. And today you can look, Christianity has been filled with evil. Though they call themselves to be named as Christians for the first time in Antioch, they forgot the principle, the root of Christians, how they have been called. The first time when they have been called as Christians, in simple word, it meant to say they have been trained disciples for more than one year. The trained disciples who have been trained for more than one year, these disciples were called for the first time as Christians in the history. And they don't know. Today, they think they're Christians, but they haven't heard that they're in the process of cacos still. You know why? Because church pastors or the church leaders or the one who are directing the church to be the heads, they haven't taken the burden of claiming out from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to make disciples of all the nations. They haven't heard about that. But the word over here for kakos in the Greek, what we find, it has been taken, if you could look upon into the Hebrew, the first word arar, which has not been renovated according to the standards of the thinking. The second word is called to be kalal, the strong code number 7043. And the meaning of the word kalal over here is nothing but dear brethren. From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, they are not heard about a discipleship program. The sad part is today, if you could look upon the churches, they have completely forgot the program of making disciples. They really forgot even John 1 love and which said to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God called to be technon. What they were, they were been called to be the disciples of Christ. They completely forgot that process. The process of becoming disciples, the process of becoming the intention of the Lord God, which is said, going and make disciples of all the nations, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. You know, we have left the basic theme of the Bible. Christians are called Christians for the first time in Antioch. We have been trained for more than one year. Those trained disciples were called Christians. You forgot that. Christ, our Lord of God, began his ministry with the disciples. He handed over that ministry to the disciples so that those disciples can go and make disciples of all the nations. That's also a forgot. You're partaking of your Lord's table when you come to take up your bread, communion, what you can call. It has to be taken who are disciples. That's also a forgot. In Romans chapter 8, an apostle Paul writes this epistle, he said, 
the Holy Spirit of Lord God beareth witness with the human spirit, provided if you are a technon, you are a disciple to the Lord. That also we have forgot. Matthew 13, 50, to the great words what we read. After making them to understand the six parables, now he says the seventh one, what it is. If you have heard them, now I will tell you the seventh one, what it is. He said, joined as disciples, growing up into grammatias, such is the kingdom of God. You haven't even joined as disciples, then when you will grow up into grammatias to the Lord. That's the meaning of the word kalal. That is from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun. Making discipleship should be the ultimate theme of every pastor because that's why he has been called. That's why he has been made to be in the church, to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's the ultimate theme for us. There is no other purpose why we have been kept alive on this earth. The ultimate theme, go and make disciples, go and make disciples, go and make disciples of all the nations. And that's the word, kakos. What sort of a people? Kakos. Today also you have in your blood, you're a cursed people. You know why? Because you don't have the theme of making disciples. Neither you're feared to ask your pastor teachers to understand what it is Christ our Lord our God dealt with the disciples. What it is the first time in Antioch Christians were called and those Christians were trained disciples for more than one year. What it is and no one is interested even to ask and check the things pertaining in the original Greek or Hebrew particularly when we say in Romans chapter 8 your spirit has been bore witness by Lord God the Holy Spirit provided you are a technon you are a disciple to the Lord and John 1 11 he said to them he gave the power who to whom they received what they received, they received saying that Christ was our Lord of God is God. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. The word sons over there, what? Disciples, technon to Christ. You're living in such sort of a curse to the generations. Cursed you are being in the sense of being spitted upon you. And what are trying to run your drama in the church? Weekly ones to the church. It's not just a weekly ones church. Weekly ones show off you can call. Social clubs. Or the way how you can go on to have your standards of exposing in your fashion beauty. The way how they walk that uh, rack or aisle, what you can call that. You're coming over there to show off your clothes. You're coming over there to show off your jewel. You're coming over there to show off. Where the word of Lord God ought to be, where you have fallen. You're coming just to show off your way of life, your stupidity way of life. And up to what extent you're able to show off, just look. No fear of God. You come to serve Lord God with your lips, your heart's being very, very far away. No fear of Lord God at all. It's just a show off. And whom they try to impress? <laughs> the fellow unbelievers saying that Christianity is also like a religion for them. In their religion, they look to learn the things that are good for them. And in this religion, they learn to look the things that which are best for them. That's it. Be good, do good. <laughs> they forgot the principal theme, why Christ, O Lord of God, has called you to be given the adoption of sons with a great access to cry out to God the Father, as you can claim to the words, as he said, crying out, Abba, Father, sharing his destiny, sharing his righteousness, sharing his eternal life. You're called to share and enjoy the things pertaining to his eternal life so that you could be like him. And Christ, our Lord of a God, if you could look upon the day of his fasting of 40 days, he begins to fight against Satan in the sense to defend Satan by opening up his mouth, mouth with the word of God as he says, it stands written. It stands written. That's very simple. He goes to claim, it stands written. 
and he opens his mouth with the word of God. Even in the cross, when we look upon the fifth phrase, which he speaks, I thirst. The same thing what we read in Psalms chapter 69 in verse 21 and following. There also we look how much he has been entrusted in the word of God. He opened up his mouth with the word of God. And we are called now in 1 John 2, 6 to walk like Christ. And though you may not understand that, we can look upon the word demoth in Genesis 5, as he said, your every precept of your thought process, what you get in your blood, has to be with the word of God. And nothing but the word of God. Your every precept, your every thought, your every intention, nothing but simply the word of God. Now how simple it is. Your every precept, your every thought. That's what God made man, the moth. And if you don't have that, what are standards of how many you are? You're going to become like lunatics. Before to reach the point of lunatics, what you will you become? Cacos. And the people, cacos, are the ones who haven't renovated their head. From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, they have failed to listen to the cry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's the meaning called to be cacos over here. And then you will find over here is to sense this sick people who, are, who were miserably ill. They were able to become in the sense of becoming grievously diseased. And then he said, they were sick in Matthew 4, 24, people that were taken with diverse diseases. The word polypoiculas are the, are the color of the word meant to say over here, much variegated color or the sense what we can call saying, that is, from the vigor and valor, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, what all gimmicks man can come up. What all gimmicks to avoid the word of God? What all gimmicks to fail to renovate the standards of his thinking? What men can achieve? That's what he said. This is called to be like various, much variegated. The word what we find in the Hebrew it is called 5348 strong code number. And the word over here, if you can look, it is called to be nakod. That is, as being taken as spotted. Or the way when you can find the critical thoughts or critical examination of these thoughts. So here you can find the word nakod, followed by the word what we can say rikma, the strong code number for rikma 7553. And what is the meaning of rikma? Once again in their head from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun. By that we meant to say what, what all man can have affairs on this earth. The thing that is called to be like a fashion work in his blood various sicknesses so the greater he loves to avoid the word of lord god the greater he has been fashioned for his own sickness in this blood being in the word of lord god is a complete healing the various schemes the various thoughts the various procedures what he can think on this earth which are able to perform he says the fashioning of your blood that's the various sicknesses. And then the word diseases is called to be gnosis. And the meaning of the word gnosis over here meant to say, dear brethren, as their body being not built up to be a disciple to the Lord. How are you going to get your sicknesses? When your body is not able to build up to Christ as disciple. That is where and how we are going to get your sicknesses. If you haven't built up a wall of fortification to make up your mind to become a disciple to the word of Lord God, for sure you are in sickness, dear brethren. The word what we can find over here is called to be Kale. The strong code number 2481. And what is that Kale? It meant to say, the way how you may appear good outward, but inward the hole has been drilled. Like the bow drill tool. And then, what happens? By moving back and forth, firmly pressing down, the drill spins around drilling the hole. That is, you have been perforated, you have been drilled up. And as you're going to be drilled up in such sense, what happens? You're going to simply end up as becoming outward to be good, but inward you will be like dead man bones, and that's what you'll be drilled up, 
and that drilling nature it becomes the thing called to be sickness. People may say it is the age factor, they're growing up to be sickened. No. You have been negligent, you have been far away by drilling up your life to the word of God. By building up your life to the will of God, you have been very, very far away. And since you have been very, very far away, day by day, the hole has been drilled. And you're not able to realize, day by day as you have been far away from the discipleship program, day by day you have been far away from the will of Lord God the Father, it is what you can look the way how the sickness appears because your body is not disciple oriented and the way how your sickness appears for you dear brethren you may not realize that it is appearing for you like a sickness and that's what you will claim as the days pass by or as the years pass by you claim and you say saying that this is purely the factor of your age so age related issues and as well as you will find your physicians your doctors coming up to say research after certain age the hairs will turn white after certain age the strength deteriorates now dear brethren caleb couldn't have said if you would have realized this process he said though he is 85 he has in him the vigor of 40 about moses the lord god the holy ghost wouldn't have given that witness though he was of 120 years his eyesight was not dimmed neither his vigor and valor of his flesh was abated you know why do you think these things have been given they have not perforated holes they have not drilled up with the drill so that they could be far away from discipleship program they were not just slaves but they were prisoners to god they had upon them such sort of a spirit they walked according to the will of lord god the father they had such a spirit upon them and they continued to live such a spirit for christ that's the very very simple thing which you and i should know they perforated the holes for them, those who have been far away from discipleship program, but these people were not been drilled holes inside. That's the word called to be kale. Because they build a wall of fortification, you know, like the way how Nehemiah goes to build back once again the things pertaining to the walls of the gates of the city. So that he said, at one hand, we had sword, and one hand, we continued the work. Such is the work which every believer should grow up to do the will of God the Father. And they have been ridiculed, they have been mocked, and they have been said, the walls which Nehemiah built, even if a fox could cross through, it may fall. People will ridicule. But first you need to build up a wall, a wall of, fort a wall of fortification. That's what a differentiation between the way of your life towards in the world, a way of your life towards God. The very first thing you need to build up a wall of fortification. If you don't have that wall of fortification, like for a discipleship program, the drills have operating to drill in you and as you pass down by the age people will call it's purely the age factor but really dear brethren as you pass down the age if you have been firmly drilled if you have firmly fixed up your wall of fortification no way of a chance to be drilled the way how we grow old the way how we become more anger example you can find elisha or elijah in the same chapter of first kings 18 when we look he outran ahab though he was in the chariots because that's how the spirit of lord god makes them to be anger swifter and it will make them to be still alive for the work of god day by day though the outward man perishes inward man has been renewed in the sense what it is what your inner nature inner man that controls your outward body your inner man is becoming day by day more available to the vigor and valor of bible doctrine it renovates in such a sense it doesn't fear for any other stupid things on this earth. The inner man has been so much strengthened, it could coordinate with the outward man and it becomes like the eagle to renew its strength because the work of Lord God is more. The renovating standards of Bible doctrine which has to be inculcated in our pulpits are more. But you know who are the enemies? Enemies within are more than the enemies outside. We have a trouble first with our own Christendom category of pastor teachers. I've already been trying to settle up their lives with singing and dancing. 
running orchestras rather than making them to teach the word of God, making the crowds from Baptist to Pentecost, where the word of Lord God has to be taught, the people have become to such an extent, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, they have been completely able to make singing and dancing to be priority rather than the word of God which can change them. The first enemies of within. The drilling of your holes for your health begins within. Look into the church pastor where he doesn't train you up to become disciples, where he doesn't train you to carry a cross, where he doesn't train you to become the will of God the Father to shine forth, where he doesn't train you up to the purpose of Lord God the Father. Look upon such pastor teachers first. These are the first main traitors for your spiritual growth and for your physical health. Your physical health is directly proportionate to your pastor in your church. Whether you believe it or not. Because when he neglects to fortify the holes of your body, or to pack it up and to seal it up, for example, you can have for your teeth what you call to be the root canal therapy. Before it can go, what they do, if you have any, any, any slight mark of a dark image, they just first remove out those things and they do filling. And that filling can protect the remaining part of the tree, teeth. And you can know if you're a dentist what it is. If you don't fill it up, the entire teeth is gone. The first thing what the pastor teacher does, he goes to fill it up, the gaps. He makes them to realize this is not the way of life. The true way of life is this. So be careful in the standards. Fill it up, fill up the gap. And the greater you fill up according to the standards of the word of Lord God, greater you're going to protect your health. So the physical health of each and every believer is a direct proportionate to the standards of what you can call to be as your spiritual growth. And if you don't have that spiritual growth, if you don't have that spiritual reality for the Bible doctrine, then for sure it meant to say what you have been a man who doesn't know the real value of Bible doctrine in your life. The pastor himself is a direct proportionate. Therefore, first thing what happens, he goes to fill up your gap. Therefore, Christ, the Lord of the God, claims in Jeremiah saying that, Is there anyone who will stand me in the gap between me and them? But then he could find, he said, there is none who can stand between me and them in the gap. There is none who is able to stand. And the reasons when you can find there is none who is able to stand. You want to say what? They haven't realized the way how you could be drilled. And what it is you will be drilled? You will be drilled into the standards of this whole. So as you go on in these holes, what happens, dear brethren, ultimately, you're going to become day by day deterioration, and as they call the age factor. And once along, once, once, once again, <coughs> excuse me. And once again, they try to come and say, uh, such and such is the age factor now. You need to go and cross check your health issues and all these things. Because already you have neglected a long way of time to become a disciple to Christ. And day by day the hole has been drilled in you. And you don't realize that you have neglected the word of Lord God. And then you come to say, because it is an age factor, I'm going to fall sick. Because it is an age factor, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And you go to give her all blah, blah, blah alibis. And you think those alibis are good and great and fine. Because of this age factor. But no, dear brethren, the LEB is very simple. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, you haven't made up your mind to build a wall of fortification to become a disciple to Christ. That's very, very simple. You have lost that. We are really not able to understand what have we lost. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, you have been in the process of knowing or realizing or understanding that you have neglected to become a disciple and the drill has been great. Slowly, day by day, the drill has become more. 
So various sicknesses. The word over here, what we can find, the word sickness is meant to say what? The way how we have been dwelled. So the sick people, they came. The first one, Kakos. So what they were? The mind who is not been renovated, Arar. And then what you can find? The way how from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, no discipleship program in the church. That's what Kalal, we read that. And now we can find they were taken with various sicknesses, poikilos. And the word poikilos over here meant to say, dear brethren, that which is been uh, nakod, meant to say what? The be given valor from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Every thought what they have, with various schemes what they get, as we read that in Ecclesiastes 7, 29. Lord God made man upright, but he cometh up with many, many, many schemes. That's the word nakod. And then what do you find over here after the word nakod? You can understand the second word called to be Rikma, the strong code number 7553. And the meaning of the word Rikma is the fashioning of their reasons, the fashioning of the substitution points, the fashioning what they come up and they would say that this is what we have been able to perform. This is what we have been able to give the reasons for our blood, not to renovate the science of our thinking. So they would love to say all these stupid stories. That's what the word called to be fashion, Rikma. So here, dear brethren, various or diverse, and now the word sicknesses. The word sicknesses is what the word called to be like torments. What is that? They have been drilled up day by day, drilled up day by day. You may have many reasons and say why you will not come to the church, but you have been drilled up. So what is the solution for all of these things? He says, the one who have been in the standards of torments as well. The people who are in the process of torments, what they are, the first thing, the thought process and the blood do not match the word of God. And the second thing, what you can find over here for torments, he says, as the Greek word basanos, it meant to say, the torments is that when you are not a scribe. The torments is when your body is not a disciple. The torments is when your blood is not able to pump in, in the standards of the scribe. So here, dear brother, in the strong chord number 3639, what is the meaning of that? It is called to be kelima. That's the torment. If a body is not growing up to become like a grammatius or fulfilling Matthew 1352, then it is called to be as a torment. And people have joined ministries today for fun, for the belly, for the survival, having no need to have any shelter or any other work thinking that they can say, praise the Lord, God bless you, and X, Y, Z terms, sing some good songs and make up their life, they have really tormenting you. And you may not understand the torment because you're thinking you're good with each other, like people, like priests, as Hosea says. You're good to each other. As the pastor could say, this is what it is good. The people would say, this is what it is good. And we will survive in this journey. And they don't even realize it's a torment for them. The inner consciousness is not satisfied. The inner consciousness is not having the urge to be alert to know more. And like the way how Samuel was been told, when he was been awake, he was been told. The same thing with what eagerness you have to be for the Lord God to know more. The same thing what over here, Job is expecting the answer to say from the Lord God. So Lord God, the Father says, grid up your lions and let reason. You're thinking you're more righteous than me. The reasons what I intend for you to renovate your head. But you thought the pressure upon your blood is greater than renovating your head in the word of God. So dear brethren, the intentions of your life what it is. So every time you look, he said, it's a torment. Why it's a torment? Because your body is not a discipleship program. Your body is not like a scribe. Your body is not in the process of becoming the word of God. That's what it has been called over here as Kelima. And then he says over here, the word torment, Basanos, which is nothing but for us to explain. Asma, the first one, 817 code, meant to say what? Desolate. Asma meant to say what? Desolate of breath. Why? 
your thought process is far away from the process of making your blood to think the word of God. Since your thought process is far away making your blood to be the word of God, you are like asthma, that is meant to say torment. And that blood, if it is not growing up to become like a grammatist in the Lord God, then it is like a double torment, kelima, what we are able to read. The people who came towards him, the first one, sick ones with various sicknesses and then torments. And then the fourth category, they possessed were with devils. What happens? Daimonizomai. The word devil over here, it is nothing but your brethren, which is called to say to be under the power of Satan possessed men. So what they do, Satan possessed men, blinding their eyes not to know the word of God. That's what they do. Blinding their eyes not to realize the will of the Lord God. That's called to be devils possessed. And then you find they were lunatics. Who were lunatics? The one who have been struck up or influenced by saying that the sunlight comes from the moon rather than the sun. It's like a moon struck people. The word lunatic meant to say what? The origin of the man to get life on this earth begins with the sun. Therefore we need to worship not the sun but the sun of righteousness. That's what we look in the book of Malachi. But these people, they think, we simply worship the sun, S-U-N, not S-O-N of righteousness. These are moonstruck. You know why moonstruck? They think the life originates from the moon. They forgot moon is the reflection of the sun. You know, that's what you will realize. A man is so full not even to realize what the word of Lord God says in the creation of day one. Or the Genesis chapter 1, first sun and then the moon, light and darkness. And people think now we have a supplication to get from the moon of a life. Oh dear brethren, it is not the moon, but these are moonstruck, lunatics are moonstruck. They think the life is being taken to the standards of the moon, the thinking is taken to the standards of the moon. Therefore, they are moonstruck. So we find over dear brethren, the way what we can find the lunatics. And then what you can end up? Those with palsy. Who are the people called to be palsy? Paralytic. In what sense they're paralytic? In the sense of not knowing the true word of God. Even you're paralytic. If you don't know the word of God, you're paralytic and all of these categories, what did he do? He gave them Rafa, he healed them. And the word Rafa over here, what we meant to say, he gave them the thought process to be changed in their body, like Yeshab, having a complete relaxation. The strong code number 3427. He gave them such sort of a relaxation so that the word healed them meant to say, so that they can come and they cure and they become now to be a servant of Lord God, attendant of Lord God. That's what they've been called, to be the witness of Lord God. Because they first now got to know the fear of Lord God. Now they're going to become the servant of Lord God. They're going to cling with the Lord God. And they're going to be the process to be swearing by Lord God. Therefore, the viewpoint of life and the body and the thought process will be absolutely to the standards of becoming the word of Lord God. So, dear brethren, what happens? Complete relaxation because your body is now renovated. That's what Lord God the Father intended over here. Though man fall from the stage of Genesis 5.1, the muth into his likeness, what we call 1823, he became the image, what it is, Salem. From Demut he became Salem. Why? Because originally he was been called to be getting every thought into captivity for Christ so that he could be healed as we read the word from Matthew chapter 4 in verse 24 for the word called to be as Yeshab. So, from Demuth he first fallen, but Christ, O Lord of our God, makes you all to be in the standards of whatever lunatic you are, palsy you are, or sick-minded you are, various sicknesses you are, torments you have, or evil nature, whatever you have. He said, from all of those things, I have made you from the process of Salem into becoming the process of what you can call, again, 
in the image of God, E. I. Khan, Colossians 3.10, by which he said, you have been called now to conform to his image. What it is? From Demut you became Salem. Salem is the process where you are going to have extreme pressure upon your life in such a sense that you will not become a disciple. In such a sense your blood will be far away from the word of God. Therefore you are going to become the man called to be in the sense as Matthew 4, emphasizing sickened people with various sicknesses, torments, possessed with devil, you will be lunatics, you will be palsy. And all these people, God the Father is going to heal and is going to heal you in such a sense. Now, once again, you're going to come back from the process of Salem as Colossians chapter 3 in verse number 10, conforming to his image called to be E.I. Khan. That's what we have been called over here in verse 3, 10 and 11. And having put upon the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him, the Greek word E.I. Khan, what it is, it is called to be the same word what we can call Salem, because you have been taken up to become once again the process of renovating your life under pressure discipleship program renovating under life your pressure to make up your every blood or every thought into captivity for christ so what you're going to become now you're going to become like e icon process and that's e icon process from your old sin nature you have to be renovated to the standards of christ that's what apostle paul writes over here which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him that's the real principle of our life we have been called to be renewed to put upon on the standards of the new man so as, as the David prays in Psalms 51 creating me a clean heart O Lord and renew a right spirit within me and then he says over here in Romans chapter 12 in verse 1 2 and 3 do not conform to the world but find the renovate your standards of your thinking the same thing in Ephesians 4 23 be renewed in the spirit of your mind so that you can put upon the new man Hebrews 6 6 so that if you have been fallen away again to renew them unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the son of God and put him to open shame again he says over here to renovate therefore what we are now we have been changed to look upon from image of God to the glory of God as second Corinthians 3 18 emphasizes but we all with the open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of God the same thing dear brethren in second Corinthians 4 6 we read for God who had commanded the light to shine out of the darkness hath shined in our hearts that to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God so that in the face of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the same thing we say in 1 John chapter 2 in verse 3 and hereby we know that we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth of God is not found in him but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected again the word telelios that the meaning has to be over here hereby know we that we are in him Therefore, he says in verse 6, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk as he walked. So, dear brethren, here we have these great references pertaining to knowing Christ as our Lord of our God and becoming the true image of God. So, when he said in Genesis 1.26, Let us make man in our own image. The word over here meant to say Salem. What he has been fallen, from there he has. And the word Demuth into the similitude of his thinking. So, man from Demuth, he becomes Salem. Now again, once again, he has to become E-Icon Salem. So the same thing in Genesis 1.27. And he created man in his own image, in the image of God, created he him, male and female. So your every thought has to be to the process against any pressure after innovating in Christ to become the disciples of the word of God. Therefore, we are called to be his workmanship poema in Ephesians 2.10. Be created before the foundation of the world. The same thing again in Ephesians 4.23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, followed by the process to put upon the new man who has been made after the image of God, which has been called in the process of righteousness and the true holiness. Therefore, dear brethren, let us not fashion ourselves to the formal lusts of our ignorance, but rather we are called to be holy as is holy in every manner of conversation that is called to be anastrophe, meant to say the manner of life or conduct or behavior, because we have been called to conform to his true image in God. So, dear brethren, when he uses the word Salem, 
and the word sell them what we can find from Adama creating to Seth. He wants him to be the process of becoming the new renovated creation for the Lord God in the place of Abel which has been killed. Now this Abel who has been killed by Cain, now he comes to become Salem in the image of God. Therefore, when God created man after his own likeness, Demuth, he became Salem. Now from Salem, once again, the man has to become the word of God, which is called to be E icon in Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, when Christ our Lord of God has cometh for us, he made us our life to be in the process of becoming the will of Lord God the Father, so that we are no longer in the standards of this earth, walking vanity in this life, but rather we ought to be the people walking reality in Christ. So, dear brethren, what's your salam? If your salam is not conforming to the image of Christ, that is, if you don't know, you have been put in extreme pressure to become a disciple under testing, your blood of every thought should be the confirmation of the image of Christ, then for sure, dear brethren, you have lost the true purpose in this life. So, God made man in his own image. He wanted every facet of the blood of you to become a disciple of the word of Lord God. And if that man is not able to become in his every facet to the will of Lord God, then he can never become what though he has been taken to be Salem to conform to his image. So how the Salem would come when you have been put extreme pressure to become the word of Lord God to these people. So how it is putting extreme pressure as a disciple. To put extreme pressure from discipleship to have your blood on that. So, dear brethren, your blood should once again come back to know the word of Lord God and knowing the will of Lord God the Father, you will become his disciple growing up into Grammatius, fulfilling the great pale wonders of his word. So, as we look upon the word God created Salem and then he becomes Demuth, Again, from Demuth, he has fallen to become Selim through Adam, progeny of Seth. Likewise, through the last Adam, we are called to become once again Demuth. That is to get every thought into captivity for Christ by making up our each and every word of Lord God to shine forth, to say that we are here for Christ, to live is Christ, and to die is a great gain. So, dear brethren, what is your life now? If you're not able to become the Selim of the word of Lord God, if you're not able to renovate the standards of your thinking as per the demands of the will of Lord God, then what's your life on this earth? Because many may come and go, it will be still in the process of not renovating your Salem process. The Salem process could be noted for Matthew 4.24. The people who were sick, the people who were lunatic, the people who were in the process of demon possessed, the people who were palsy, the people, whatever we look in the standards which are contrary to the word of Lord God, they may be more, but dear brethren, it is Lord God the Father who is going to Yashab, heal them. It is not Rafa, but the word Yashab, meant to say what is going to make up the thought process to be according to the word of God in their body to reign. Such a thought process is going to give for us and such a great life is going to design for us. So that's all possible only when we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you can never grow up to the will of God the Father. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short for us to spend our time in search of vanity as many people are looking vanity to be the reality. Therefore, we find this great word for us in Hebrews chapter 13 in verse number 20. As we find over here in verse 20 and 21 in Hebrews chapter 13, we understand as the principal theme and the purpose of every believer life. So he says in verse number 20, Now may the God of peace who bought again from the dead our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant equip you with every good thing, equip you with every good thing that you may do his will. That's the reason why I've been given all facilities on this earth. The breathing process in you, the sickening process is taken out without having drilling in you. The reason why he says that he equips you with every good thing so that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and forever. Amen. 
So dear brethren, every good thing has been provided so that you may do His will, working in you that which is pleasing to Him. And if you're not able to do that or learn that, may Lord God help you. And which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe in Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, that with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care the south on my God. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the diamond from my witnesses where it has been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in their infinity, for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, they will not worry besides nature, the entire angel because of the witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being thankful for the service which are given for us, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, sovereign Lord. Amen.